dear viewers uh, <coughs> let me discuss today uh, on the poem before the altar written by ami lovell uh, <coughs> in the earlier uh, session uh, we uh, <coughs> you you might have uh, Uh, heard the discussion on uh, the poem uh, the second coming by w b aids the 20th uh, century iconic poet and there you should have gone through the poem where uh, <coughs> some uh, revelation is discussed and uh, the second coming of jesus uh, uh, is discussed uh, and how that uh, uh, violence or um, anarchy bloodshed is loosed upon the world that was all discussed to bring the remedy for that uh, jesus should have uh, should come once again <coughs> to this world and that concept you have Uh, read in that poem uh in this session <coughs> uh while we <coughs> discuss the poem uh before the altar we do have two objectives one uh to know something about <coughs> the poet of this poem ami uh, lovell and <coughs> uh um, to read the poem and to analyze it okay <clears throat> uh, the poet uh, ami lovell is uh, an american uh, uh, minor uh, poet uh, <clears throat> once upon a time uh, uh, the women poets uh, used to be called poetess but now uh, calling uh, women poets uh poetess uh, is uh, <coughs> not uh, accepted by the feminist that's for let us call uh, ami lovell was a poet a minor american <coughs> uh, poet she uh, <coughs> was in 20th century uh, known for the experimentation of uh, some images some uh, typical images and the those images uh, used by her were very uh, simple and effective <coughs> she also wrote uh, poems in different uh, uh, ways in different genres like uh, romantic lyrics she wrote and dramatic monologues she wrote while she wrote the dramatic monologues we feel that she might be uh, influenced by uh, frost's uh, <coughs> style of writing uh, because um, the majority of her dramatic monologues are frost like and she also contributed certain translations uh, those translations were from are from uh, the chinese writings <coughs> and another important uh, uh, work she produced uh, is uh, she wrote biography of uh, john keats <coughs> you should know uh, who is this john keats john keats uh, was one of the famous romantic poets who uh, <coughs> was identified as uh, uh, the leading romantic poet in uh, the second generation of the romantic poets <coughs> okay with this much about uh, the poet uh, ami lovell uh, let us uh, move on to the poem the poem <coughs> Mm, before we <coughs> read the text of the poem uh, let us know uh, 
what it is about uh, what this poem is about this poem is about an innocent and poor devotee's submission of his prayer standing in front of uh, the altar altar it is a l t a r altar means <coughs> it is a payol uh, which is a, a Uh, meant for uh, <coughs> god's uh, statue and uh, uh, to be worshipped <coughs> god's statue is put upon a payol and that payol is called altar that we call in kannada uh, devara gadduge so that is altar standing in front of the altar an innocent and uh, very very poor devotee Uh, submits his uh, prayer he uh, presents his prayer uh, to the god uh, <coughs> while we read the poem we find this poem in two voices now uh, we can also divide this poem in two uh, parts the first part presents uh, the condition of this devotee who is so poor who is so innocent who is uh, uh, <clears throat> having uh, no good life and what his predicament is presented in the first part by one speaker <clears throat> let us take it as poet herself she presents what kind of a devotee he is in the first half of the poem in the second half of the poem the devotee himself speaks so that's why i i told this poem is in two voices first the poet the speaker presents that the devotee uh, devotee's condition devotee's uh, status she so, so, so presents as the first voice she so presents devotee how he is what is his condition and how he is poor and how he is innocent she presents and then devotee him himself is allowed to present his prayer in his own words in his own voice he presents his prayer to the god and that is why you observe the text uh, if you have kept the text with you please you go through the lines and observe uh what whatever is submitted or whatever is uttered by that uh, uh, devotee that is put into uh, inverted comma that has been made quote and unquote you see till uh, <clears throat> the last two lines of uh, the poem it is uh, quoted and unquoted see only the last two lines are not put in uh, uh, into inverted brackets because inverted commas because <coughs> the last two lines are once again spoken by the poet speaker so this is uh, <coughs> the structure of the poem that you should keep into your mind uh, here when we, when when we go through the text of the poem we see many images and those images uh, we can uh, understand that helps us to uh, get the comprehension of the poem uh, in a better way <coughs> then let's uh, <coughs> uh, move on to the text of the poem where we can uh, <coughs> uh, get uh, the idea what kind of the devotee he is he is a poor devotee standing in front of the goddess uh, he comes to that uh, altar uh, without uh, bringing any offerings without bringing <coughs> any gifts to the god as the other rich people will bring see <coughs> well we begin to read the text Uh, let us read the text before the altar board he stands 
with empty hands. So the devotee comes uh, in front of the altar and stands with the empty hands. He has not brought any valuable offerings to the God. Upon it, perfumed offerings burn, wreathing with smoke, the sacrificial urn. There is an urn on the altar in which many of the other devotees have already poured their offerings, already poured their offerings and the, those offerings are being burnt to send those offerings in, uh, in the smoke to the God who is above, who is so high, uh, somewhere so high and that, those offerings are being sent uh, <coughs> through uh, the smoke. When we begin to read uh, these lines, we certainly remember uh, one of the vachanas written by Basavanna. Nanenu madalaya badavanaya Yenna kale kamba Yenna dehave degula Yenna sirave vanna kalasavaya Kuda sangama deva Stavarak aliwuntu jangamak aliwilla So this vachana is also translated in uh, into English by <coughs> by A.K. Ramanujan. What can I, a poor, do? Uh, the rich will make temples for Shiva. Ullavar Shivaleva Kattuvaru Nanenu Madalaya Badavanaya. The rich will make temple for Shiva. What can I, poor man, do? My legs are the pillars, my body the shrain, my head a cupola of gold. O Lord of the meeting rivers, standing shall fall. Moving shall stay. This is one of the Basarno Rachana. This is one of the Bandira devotee. Basarno Hero Anta Bhakta Danala. That Bhakta Nana now Kandange Ansate. So this devotee has come here and stood in front of the altar with empty hands. He has not brought any offerings to the God. But before this devotee, many other devotees have come and poured their offerings into that urn and uh, in, in that urn uh, all those offerings are being burnt <coughs> to send them uh, through the smoke uh, to the God who is so high, somewhere so high <coughs> in the sky. Reading with smoke the sacrifice you learn, not one of all these has he given. See, there are many offerings uh, poured into the urn and all those offerings are uh, burning and burning continuously to uh, send through <coughs> the smoke. But among those offerings, there is not a single one of this devotee because this devotee is a very poor fellow. No flame of his has leaped to heaven. As those offerings were burning, the flame is leaping so high to the heaven where the God uh, is. This flame is leaping to the heaven where the God is. But uh, among those flames, not a single flame is of this devotee. Because he hasn't brought any offering. He came and stood before the altar uh, empty-handedly. Fire soul vermilion hearted, but he has come with his soul, which is is uh, uh, itself burnt, which is itself being burnt, and he has come with his heart, which itself is filled with vermilion. Ganda kunkumavanna hachi puja salara e bhakta atwa tanda tanna. Ede Galana, Tandatana, Gibbs Galana, Hareke Galana, Sur the Binki Hachi Sudalara e Bakta, Tanodayavane, Sutu, a Deverge, Arpuso the Kagi, Suduva Rudayavane, Suduva Soul, Atma Nehotu, Tandidane, Tana 
ಹೃದಯದ ಒಳಗೆ ಕುಂಕುಮ ಗಂಧ ಕುಂಕುಮವನ್ನು ತುಂಬಿಕೊಂಡು ಬಂದಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಫೋಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಟೆಡ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎ ಫ್ಯೂ ಸ್ಪೇರ್ ಪೆನ್ಸ್ ಸಿ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಪುವರ್ ಹಿ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನಫ್ ಟು ಈಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸ್ಪೇರ್ ದ ಕ್ವೈನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸಚ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಈವನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಮನಿ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಫಿಲ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಬೆಲಿ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಈವನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಸಚ್ ಎನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪಾವರ್ಟಿ ಇನ್ ಅ ಇನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಹರಿಬಲ್ ಪಾವರ್ಟಿ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎ ಫ್ಯೂ ಸ್ಪೇರ್ ಪೆನ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಚೀಪ್ಲಿ ಬಾಟ್ ಟು ಫ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಐಡ್ಲಿ ಆಸ್ಟ್ ಪೆಟಿಸನ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಈವನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಕ್ವೈನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಾಟ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ಈವನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಕ್ವೈನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಗಾಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಐಡ್ಲಿ ಸಬ್ಮಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಪೆಟಿಷನ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಐಡ್ಲಿ ಸಬ್ಮಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಪೆಟಿಷನ್ ಟು ದ ಗಾಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ದ ಪೋಯೆಟ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಅಸ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಮೋರ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಟ್ ಡೆವೋಟಿ ಹಿಸ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಲವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಾವರ್ಟಿ ದಿಸ್ ಪುವರ್ ಡೆವೋಟಿ ಈಸ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಟೂ ಅಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಟೂ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಟೂ ಅಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಯಬಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡೆವೋಟಿ ಡು ಯು ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಲವ್ ಅನದರ್ ಈಸ್ ಪಾವರ್ಟಿ ಅವನ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವನಿಗಿದ್ದ ಎರಡೇ ಎರಡು ಆಸ್ತಿಗಳಂತೆ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ದಾರಿದ್ರೆ ಬಡತನ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೈಲ್ ದ ಮೂನ್ ಸ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಲೋ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೈ ಸಿ ಇಟ್ ಶೋಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ನೈಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಓವರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಆಲ್ಟರ್ ಸಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ನೈಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ದ ಸನ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ವಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಒನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಟು ಅನದರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಲೋ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೈ ಅಥವಾ ಆಟ್ ಅ ವೇವಿಂಗ್ ಪೈನ್ ಟ್ರೀ and under that waving pine tree he is standing and that pine tree is that pine tree's shadow is also moving from one side to another because of the movement of the moon and soon see soon tips all the needles there with silver sparkles his way of life is very tough with full of uh, needles tipped on the way uh, uh, with silver sparkles bitterly he gazes while his soul he bitterly gazes everything on the floor because he has come over here and uh, stood before the altar in the night uh, so he he looks all over there and here and there he finds some uh, needles with silver sparkles they are sparkling they are shining bitterly he gazes while his soul grows hard with thinking he is not happy uh, to be in front of the god because he always thinks about what he has brought nothing he has brought nothing so he thinks very unhappily that uh, uh, about the poorness of his dole dole means uh, offering to the god ede ede ide adantevala devarge ede badisadu antevala devarge a dole what he has brought to the god is uh, very poor nothing even he has brought nothing to the god and that's why he always thinks about uh, his uh, helplessness of not bringing anything to the god as all others have brought and poured into the urn which is being burned to burned to uh, uh, send through the air, through the smoke to the god 
So up to this uh, line, it is spoken by the speaker poet. And uh, from the next line onwards, it is put into bracket because it is another voice. That voice is the voice of the devotee himself. He submits his prayer, telling his condition to the God, telling about his poverty to the God, telling about his uh, uh, property, his assets to the God. He presents his submission, he presents his prayer uh, to the God. See what prayer he presents, let us see. Shining and distant Goddess, hear my prayer. Shining and distant Goddess, hear my prayer. He knows that God is not nearer to him because we all uh, believe that God is uh, somewhere uh, so far away from us in the high status, in the air, in the sky, he is far away from us. Shining and distant Goddess, but still he appears to us because he is always shining and he is so distant, he is so far away from us. Shining and distant Goddess, hear my prayer. He makes an appeal to the God to listen to his prayer. Where you swim in the high air, you are so distant from me, you are so far away from me in the uh, air, so high in the sky. With charity look down on me under this tree. I am standing under this tree, but you are there so high in the air in the sky. Please give me some time, give me some time or uh, please at least in charity give uh, a look towards me give a look towards me with charity look down on me i am under this tree tending the gifts i have not brought i did have the uh, <coughs> i did have the willingness to bring lots of offerings to you as all others had brought to you but what could i do i didn't have anything with me Tending the gifts I have not brought. I had in mind to bring certain good offerings to you, but I didn't have anything to purchase the good gifts for you, the valuable gifts for you. That's why I never brought anything. The rare and goodly things I have not sought. And I couldn't go for the rare and uh, goodly things, the rare and the valuable, precious things I could not buy because I am such a poor fellow instead. But I have not come without having anything. I have also come having something for you. Do you know what is that? That is all my life itself. See, all other rich devotees might have brought so many gifts to you, so many offerings to you, but I have come barehandedly, I have come empty-handedly, but still I do have something valuable with me to offer you. Do you know what is that? That is my life itself. Means, I am such a devotee, I am prepared to sacrifice my life for you. I am prepared to sacrifice my life for you, but the rich people may sacrifice certain things for you, certain valuable things for you. But I am prepared to sacrifice my whole life to you. Upon the wings of shimmering moonbeams, I pack my poet's dreams for you. See, upon the wings of shimmering moonbeams. You are so high in the sky. You are in the air so high in the sky. How can I send my life as a gift to you? He says, I would like to send 
my life as a gift to you as an offering to you through the moon beams through the rays of the moon i will uh, send my life to you i pack my poets dreams for you how can i send my life i can send my life to you through the moon beams by packing them up into my lines of poems into my lines of poetry i can pack up all my life i can pack up all my dreams of life and send them to you on the beams of moon beams of the moon see this is how brungada benneri bantu see the poetry uh, is of uh, um, imagination and uh, imagination is the vehicle of poetry to send uh, the ideas and emotions uh, uh, um, from one to another that imagination itself is the vehicle that helps the poet to send his feelings his his emotions his uh, experience his dreams uh, uh, to others to the readers my varying strife my courage my loss into the night i toss what else i can present to you instead of my life in my life there is all these things there are all these things my varying strife throughout my life i have uh, tirelessly uh, varied i have tirelessly struggled uh, strived to come up in my life and that i would like to present you as an offering my courage my loss my life is poor one that poverty itself is my property love is my property with that property of love and poverty i have lived even up to the day because of my courage and i would like to toss it to you in this night i would like to toss it to you for you golden divinity but you the god you are very rich oh you god you are very rich you are golden divinity deign to look upon deign to look down on me deign to look down on me means please bow your head you are so high in the sky you are so high in the air please you bow your head so that you can look at me who so unworthily offers to you i think i am not a worthy devotee to be looked upon because i have not brought anything i am prepared to sacrifice my life to you as offering as an offering i am ready to sacrifice my life to you who so unworthy offers to you and life has known seeds withered and sown do you know what what is the uh, kind of life i am living do you know what is the kind of life i am living the kind of life i am living is it is the life of withered seeds withered seeds that seeds are left unsown and they are withered away and then hopes turning quick to fears i do have hope of my life to come out of that poverty but very often that hope turns quickly to fears i can't do anything i can't help myself my hopes turn very quickly to fears such a, a, a poor fellow i am such a helpless fellow i am such a, an unfortunate fellow i am laughter which dies in tears i too like to laugh in my life i too want to be happy in my life but whenever i try to laugh and whenever i try to be happy my tears my tears makes my happiness die 
my tears make my happiness die what can i do i am helpless the shredded remnant of a man the shredded remnant of a man is all the span so what i am now i am now uh the man having been torn into pieces i am just a man now having been torn into pieces i am uh, good for nothing i am nothing now i am torn into pieces is all the span and compass of, of my offering to you and that's why this is the size of the gift that i can offer to you that is my life life with love and poverty life with fears and tears life with uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, with, with with no hope in uh, uh, in my life so i can offer to you only that much of my life empty and silent see i have come here with empty hands but i am standing in front of you to 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 submit my prayer but i don't ask for anything i am silent i don't ask for anything but others who come with lots of gifts to you lots of offerings to you they will ask for something in turn but i have not brought anything and that's why i can't ask for anything i remain silent in front of you i have come empty handedly so i want to remain silent in front of you empty and silent i kneel before your pure calm majesty i know you are so pure you know what man he is what kind of uh, a devotee i am you know it very well you are so pure and calm majesty you are sublime uh, you are sublime force you are a very serious and sublime force you know very well what kind of a devotee i am kneel before your pure uh, pure calm majesty i put my knees on the floor and uh, kneel before you i put my knees on the floor and submit my prayer to you but i don't ask for anything because i don't have the right to ask for anything because i have come in front of you with empty hands and that's why i want to remain silent only i can submit my prayer that is what i can offer to you what i can present uh, <coughs> the gifts to you on this stone in this urn i pour my heart and watch it burn on this stone see i know that i am standing in front of a stone on the altar there is a stone which represents you it is just a stone in front of that stone i stand and uh, in this urn i want to pour my offering i want to pour my gifts to you do you know what offer wh what offering i would like to offer to you what gift i want to present to you i want to present my gift i want to present my offering that is my heart i want to pour into the urn to be burnt i want to pour my heart into the urn to be burnt i pour my heart and watch it burn i am ready to take out my heart and pour it into the heart uh, into the urn and i watch it how it gets burnt and it will come to you through that uh, reading through that uh, smoke that flies from uh, the earth to the high uh, <coughs> sky 
myself the sacrifice See, i don't have anything to sacrifice for you i don't have anything to lose for you but i do have myself i do have my life and that itself is my offering to you i am ready to sacrifice myself my life for you but be still and mood divinity it's my prayer to you i offer my heart and i pour it into the the urn to be burnt but i request you still and mood be still and mood you the god should be still and mood do you have that courage divinity oh devre nanu nanna hrudayavanna kittu ee burning urn dalli uriyuva a bowl nalli nanna hrudayavanna kittu haktini aa hrudaya urudu urudu ninnatta hagiya roopadalli saaguvadanna northa nanu nilthini neenu salpa kuda alugaadade nintu nodvalli aa nanna hrudaya suttu ninnatta daavisuvadanna neenu nilbeku unmoved atitta alugaadade nintu nanna hrudaya uriyuttiruvadanna nanna hrudaya suttu hoguvadanna neenu nodbeku divinity so telling this he ends up his prayer see the last two lines there we can uh, <coughs> uh, we can understand beyond the text what might be from the altar from that altar see bathed in moonlight that altar bathed in moonlight the moon is uh, uh <coughs> throwing the light upon this world and that whole altar is uh, uh <coughs> bathed the whole altar is uh, <coughs> uh, amidst that moonlight the smoke rose straight in the quiet night there's no body no uh, disturbance no sound it is completely peaceful and in that quiet night that heart of that poor devotee is being burnt and out of that burning of the heart that smoke is moving towards the high sky where the god is that where the god is believed to be so this is the end of the poem okay you could understand the text uh, by uh reading each and every line and if you go through the text once again you can easily understand every line because i explained all the lines here uh, how that uh, poor devotee uh, <coughs> wants to present his offering to uh, the god and in turn what he asks for he asks for nothing means the real devotee never asks for anything he wants to present his gifts to the god his offerings to the god that's all but he never uh, uh, demands anything in turn so that is very uh, importantly uh, pointed out here in this poem but finally those two lines uh, will make us think something that is not there in the text see uh, that uh, smoke uh, rising to the high uh, sky where the god may be it means really that uh, poor fellow poor devotee is being burnt he is being burnt in the in the in the fire of poverty and uh, in the fire of poverty that the poor devotee is being burnt and out of that um, poor devotee that love is going in the form of uh, smoke to the god and it really reaches the god 
So like that we can understand when we read the last two lines. How he tired of his life and how uh, he struggled in his life. Uh, all that uh, he presents uh, to the God and that itself is the presentation he gives. And uh, <clears throat> uh, his life is full of uh, tears and fear. His life is full of pain. His life uh, has uh, nothing to uh, lose. All that he says. Uh, this poor devotee, devotee's appeal uh, <coughs> is to the God and he wants to sacrifice uh, his own life because he doesn't have anything to sacrifice for the God. So <coughs> that is what finally we can come to a conclusion that uh, real devotee uh, comes forward to sacrifice uh, himself. Uh, in turn, he never expects anything from the God. But those who are the rich, uh, they will uh, present the gifts, uh, valuable gifts, uh, offerings to the God. But in turn, they demand for something. And that itself is the difference between poor devotee and the rich devotee. See, lastly, we can uh, uh, have uh, some uh, multiple choice questions. See the first question, the condition of the devotee is poor and honest, rich, middle class, carefree. See, A is the answer. Uh, dash is brought to goddesses offerings, flowers, incense sticks, money, nothing. So he brings nothing. Instead, he brings himself as the gift to the god. Even if that D uh, <coughs> could be uh, himself, even that would also be <coughs> the answer. The time of devotee's visit is noon, morning, evening, night. See, night because there was the moon in the sky. See, the moon beams uh, <coughs> were spread all over and it means it was night. And what makes the things on earth shining? Uh, goddess, fire, moonlight and sunlight. See, moonlight. Then, what did the devotee offer at the end of the poem? See, finally, he offers something to the God. That is, himself, rare gifts, money, prayer. See, it is himself. It is his heart. It, it is his heart means he himself sacrifices uh, his life. So, that is the answer. A is the answer. So with this much, uh, let us uh, put an end to this presentation. Thank you. Thank you one and all.